Hello guys, this is HDD Recovery Services. Uh, today we're working on this 500 gigabyte Western Digital IDE drive. It's an older unit, most likely part of one of the uh, Tornado families yeah, by the, looking at this APW code. And um, this unit is IDE, so it's going to be a little bit trickier to find parts for it. This unit specifically doesn't spin and non-spinning drives technically can stop spinning due to several reasons. Reason number one, it's a dead circuit board. Reason number two, it's a burnt motor. Reason number three, are stuck heads on the disc surface. Reason number four, dead preamplifier. Reason number five would be seized motor. Now, seized motor and stuck heads on the surface of the disc will prevent the spin up sequence, but they will produce uh, some sort of noises. If you put your ear next to the drive and listen to it when the power goes to it, you will either hear buzzing or you will hear beeping sounds depending on the make and the model of the drive. Let's start with the most common one, which is the printed circuit board. This specific unit doesn't seem like it's been in, submerged in water. Uh, it doesn't smell, so I don't think it was a heavy power surge. So let's find out what's happening with it. Western Digital Marble drives split into two types of uh, designs for their boards. They have uh, boards with external accessible firmware and they have uh, boards that have embedded firmware which is uh, going to be inside of the main components in there that's not going to be very easily removed. Usually at the U12 position which I'll show you momentarily you're going to find a chip that needs to be removed and transplanted to a donor PCB to perform that adaptation. If the drive is missing a chip at the U12 position that's made by Western Digital, that means the ROM is embedded. And to get it out, you have to either have um, ways of repairing the printed circuit board or uh, having ability to um, duplicate that ROM content using specialized tools such as PC3000, MRT Lab, or maybe some other. Both of which uh, are capable of performing rebuilding of that ROM information if you get a close enough match for the PCB as a donor. So uh, let's tackle this drive, find out what options it will give us. All right, so what I got here is the hard drive. I have the IDE cable that's uh, set up to channel number three. And I have a power connector that is also now plugged in. I'm going to launch uh, the channel's number three power switch. And I hear absolutely nothing. This drive is silent. No signs of life. I'm going to test this line to make sure that it actually produces power. this drive is spinning up. So the power does get to the drive, just doesn't get delivered to the motor for whatever reason. Let's find out why. So in order to do that, we're going to need a T8 screwdriver to remove the um, bolts at the back of this uh, printed circuit board. So what do we have here? We have a printed circuit board with a bunch of components on it. First thing I want to pay attention to is the U12 position, uh, eight-legged chip that is absent on this board. So that means whatever is supposed to be here externally is actually inside of this Marvel chip. Are you actually going to take the measures to remove this chip and transplant it to a donor? What if this chip turns out to be faulty also? So how to go about this. We can either try to find the problem with the board and solve it, or the second way of recovering data from this unit would be to locate an identical board from a working drive and perform firmware, ad firmware adaptation on it using PC3000 or MRT uh, in this case. So let's uh, begin by troubleshooting the board first. Maybe there is a way that we can find a problem with it and fix it. Uh, I don't know if you guys follow my channel or not, but previously on this channel I've displayed um, maybe even more than on one occasion cases that have 
problems with um, spin up and caused by failed diodes. Okay, so let's have a look. If the diode is failed, it's going to produce this noise. That means it's shorted out. So I'm going to test this diode and it is shorted. I'm going to test this diode. This diode is fine. D3 appears to be fine, D4 appears to be failed. Now for data recovery purposes, we do not even need to uh, replace it with the functional one. It does um, serve a purpose of uh, fuse. So if the power surge goes, it may get uh, shorted out, but at least it will prevent further harm to other components. Um, I don't expect to have any power surges soon. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove this chip completely, keeping in mind that it may take a little more heat to remove it because it's been heating up pretty badly by itself most likely. But once it's removed, it should open up the circuit and we should not have that um, short between the two contacts on the side. Once the circuit is open, we'll put the PCB back on, power it on and... Um, and see if it's running. Now, this would only need to be done in case if you don't have any continuity between the two uh, ends of the uh, diode. If the diode has a continuity, the problem is not with the diode, so don't take it out. So now that the diode is pulled, as you can see, we're going to test those two pads to see if, if the circuit is still shorted or not. So if it's shorted, it's going to make the sound. If it's not shorted, it will show us a number. And it's showing us a number. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, you can see it. So triple six, triple and it's climbing a little bit. I do believe that this drive will now spin up like new and uh, it will give us all of the information from it and uh, this will be a successful recovery on our behalf. But let's find out for sure. I'm gonna put this board back on. If you wanted to repair your, um, let's say you had this drive and it's sentimental to you, or if you have a station that needs an ID attachment or something, for whatever reason you need to make this device work like it did before it died, um, I would suggest finding the same board on eBay or something like that and removing the failed uh, component from the donor and putting it back onto the original. Do not take the donor board and put it on this drive because it's not going to work. Let's just leave it at that. Plugging this in. Channel 3. And I just need the attachment. So let's see what's happening now. Oh, you guys can hear that, can't you? That's a good signal for spinning hard drive. In near future, I will hook up the screen capture to this, guys, so you don't have to look at the recording of the screen, but I just don't have it set up yet. It's coming.
And let's fire up the imaging task itself. Okay, so the speed is not the greatest, but it's reading 66, 70 megabytes per second, not bad. Um, I'm gonna build a head map. That's something I just always do for any type of hard drive. One thing I did notice is that the, the head map building process takes much longer, especially on certain drives, than it does in um, Data Extractor. Data Extractor handles it a little better. Uh, right now, we're currently only at 8%. You know, I mean, this was a power surge drive. I'm pretty sure there's nothing wrong with heads on this unit, so I'm just gonna cancel it for now. Let's go into Explorer view. This drive has a FAT32 um, file system. I'm gonna have to blur it out for you because, uh, well, you know, I mean, it's somebody's stuff. I can't really let you see what I'm working with. But it uh, seems like the entire route is accessible. So if we go back and we just continue what we were doing, this will replicate the entire drive. So as you guys just saw, this is fairly uh, straightforward stuff when it comes down to burn diodes. But let's say the diode wasn't a problem uh, and uh, we were getting proper continuity on that. So the process that we would have to use um, is we would have to replicate the function, replicate the uh, uh, firmware at least that's in the Im embedded into the board uh, and uh, write that firmware to the donor. Before that's done, the drive just simply won't work uh, with the um, with direct board swap. You can't just take an, a functional board, even if it has identical part numbers on it. You can't take it from a working donor, slap it onto onto your failed drive, and expect it to work. It's just not how it goes. Uh, adaptation would need to be done for the firmware, and that could be either achieved with PC3000. I'm pretty sure MRT is fully capable of that as well, even though I haven't tried myself personally to get it done yet. It's a basic function. I'm pretty sure they uh, have a uh, have ability to perform such tasks. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below, guys. You hit like um, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. This is a channel for data recovery and everything that we show and do. Uh, Im involves around that topic. So if this is something of interest to you guys, stay tuned because there's going to be uh, more stuff. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next episode.